If you're looking for a professional general use airbrush at a budget price point, the Creos PS289 is worth taking a look at. I bought this one back in February for only $83 from Amazon. It took about a week to come because it was shipped directly from Japan, and for that price point, an airbrush of this build quality was unheard of when I just started out. So in this week's video, let's take a closer look at the Creos PS289. Just like Iwata, this airbrush is manufactured in Japan. It feels absolutely professional in the hand, and it doesn't seem like any corners were cut designing or manufacturing this airbrush. Some people have told me on here that these airbrushes are made in the same factories as Iwata in Japan, but I'm not really sure about that. Since I haven't gotten official word from either Iwata or Creos, for me, I just consider this a rumor. But I will say this, my favorite airbrush brand is Iwata, and these feel very similar. First, let's take a look at what comes in the box, because you get some pretty nice things with the PS289. Officially from the box, this airbrush is called the Procon Boy WA Double Action Platinum .3 Version 2. A really catchy name there, but its model number is the PS289, so that's what I'll be calling it throughout this video. Now this company called Mr. Hobby makes a lot of other things besides just airbrushes, and one of them is their own compressor. And if you're using one of their compressors, like the Mr. Linear compressor, you could use a small adapter to regulate the airflow. You also get this air hose, which is a proprietary one for Creos airbrushes. One part of this will fit onto that air regulator that I just showed, and the other will fit onto one of their compressors. I think that it's very nice that these are included, but I just use standard 8th inch airbrush hoses with my compressor. The threading on the PS289 is standard 1 8 inch, so I just put on a quick adapter, and then I use this to connect to my Iwata air hose, just like any other Iwata airbrush. In the box, you also get one of these cheap stamp metal wrenches to remove the nozzle, and some really nice documentation that goes into a lot of information about this airbrush. These documents are both in Japanese and English, and it's one of the most informative ones that I've seen from any brand. Again, when it's in your hand, this is definitely a top-of-the-line airbrush. You'll know right away that you're holding a professional painting tool. Under the macro lens, you can see that the chrome is flawless. There's not a single imperfection across the whole airbrush. This is just incredibly impressive, and at this price point, I'm not sure how they do it. In my experience, I've only seen this quality in the higher-end airbrushes like Harder and Steenbeck and Iwata. But this brand, Creos or Mr. Hobby, did an excellent job at competing with those two brands. As a general use airbrush, the 289 is equipped with a 0.3 millimeter needle and nozzle. This is an excellent nozzle size, which is perfect for detail work, but also it's better and more forgiving for spraying unreduced paint compared to a detail airbrush. So you're kind of getting the best of both worlds with this airbrush. There's no cutout on the rear handle for quick flushes, which is fine for me because I've never met anyone who actually uses them. But you do get a small screw on the back, which Mr. Hobby calls their needle stopper. This works just like Iwata's needle limiter, and what it does is if you screw this down, it limits how far back you can pull the trigger. This could be very useful for new painters so that you don't accidentally spray too much paint. And if you loosen this screw, you're able to pull the trigger all the way back. On the front of the airbrush, you'll see this small screw, which is called the air adjustment screw. What this does is control the amount of airflow through the front of the airbrush. If you loosen this screw, you get full airflow to whatever your PSI is set at, and if you tighten this down, you limit it, giving yourself a lower airspeed. And once in a while on some of my other airbrush reviews, I'll get someone telling me that this doesn't affect the PSI, which is correct. The reason that I said that this adjusts the PSI in other reviews is just because it's much simpler and easier to understand. When I say that I'm spraying at 20 PSI, everyone on here knows exactly what I'm talking about because we all have a regulator on our compressor which shows us this number. But when we say PSI in airbrush painting, we're really talking about two things. One is the pressure, and then the second is the airspeed. Since we don't have an easy or cheap way to measure the airspeed, we basically use PSI as both the pressure and the airspeed, just because it's the number that we can easily see on our compressor. So when painting, we set our PSI to give us a certain airspeed. A lower PSI, which is a lower pressure, is going to give you a lower airspeed. And a higher PSI is going to give you a higher airspeed. So this screw is adjusting the airspeed of the spray pattern, which is the same result we get from adjusting the PSI at our regulator. They're of course changing the airspeed in two totally different ways, but we're really getting the same result. So instead of explaining all this in every review, it's so much simpler if I just say it adjusts the PSI because you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. 
So let's move along to the airbrush breakdown. This way you can see the internal parts. The first thing I'm doing here is removing the rear handle, and this feels really solidly built. You can just tell that it's not cheap. Then I can loosen the needle chucking screw, which allows me to remove the needle. This next part that I'm screwing is called the needle spring case, and you could adjust the spring tension by how far down you tighten this. And once this is fully unscrewed, we have access to the full spring assembly, and this is exactly like Iwata's. It consists of three parts. This first part is the needle guide, and what I love to see is that the trigger lever is connected to this, so really easy to break down. And then inside is the spring itself, so super easy to break down. If you own an Iwata, you'll be very familiar with this because it's pretty much identical. Once the needle's out, you're able to remove the trigger. And this is a very comfortable one. It's your standard round trigger. I've never had issues with these, and I've always liked them. Underneath it, you'll see this small groove cut out. This always goes toward the back of the airbrush when you place it back in. Moving along to the front of the airbrush, the first thing here is the needle crown cap. This is used to protect the needle tip, and you could paint with it either on or off. This next part is called the nozzle cap. This always needs to be on in order to spray paint. And after this is fully removed, you have access to the tip of the nozzle. So if you need to clean it or replace it, you could do it right here. And then in order to remove the head cap, you can use a pair of soft doll pliers. These are great because you'll never scratch the chrome. Or better yet, on this airbrush, you can use a wrench to remove that head cap. If you have a wrench or a set of sockets, an 11 millimeter will work perfectly. But if you're in the US and you have an SAE set, a 7 16th will work just fine as well. Just remember that on an airbrush, everything should always be hand tight, but sometimes you need a tool to loosen them. This head assembly has three holes to evenly direct the airflow over the nozzle, and just like everything else on this airbrush, this feels really solidly built. So I have zero complaints here. It's a very impressive build and great attention to detail. I honestly can't imagine anyone not being impressed with the build quality that you're getting at this price point. The PS289 has a large paint cup at 10 milliliters, and it also has a very nice polish inside with an area that kind of funnels down at the bottom. This way, it really just helps direct that paint flow toward the nozzle. Something very unique about this airbrush is that this air valve assembly is kind of tilted back at an angle. I'm not quite sure why it was designed this way. I'm assuming it's for ergonomics so that it's more comfortable. I will say that in the hand that this does feel comfortable, but it feels slightly different from the airbrush designs that I'm used to. It's not a big deal or anything like that, but I can definitely feel that the lower part of this is pushing a bit farther back into my hand. Moving along to the trigger response rate, this airbrush is incredible, exactly what I want to see. If you pay attention to my trigger finger, you'll see just how far I'm pulling it back. It's almost nothing. Just a slight nudge back and I get paint at the same point. I own a few of these Mr. Hobby GSI Creos airbrushes. The first one I got was the PS771 and all of them are just like this one. They have perfect response rate, very similar to Iwata airbrushes. If you're used to that trigger design where you just nudge the trigger back a small amount and you get paint, it's the same thing here. For the paint consistency test, I have zero complaints here. This did a perfect job. You can see here that this line is continuous. There's no skipping and no splatters of paint, so the airbrush is doing an excellent job at atomizing the paint. But to be fair, a good spray pattern like this is usually more about the paint than the airbrush. So I can't stress this enough. It's really, really important to use a good, high-quality airbrush paint with your airbrushes. It's just going to make your painting experience so much easier. I'm using Createx Illustration Colors here, and they're just an excellent line. I over-reduced my paint here to spray some fine lines and some detail, and this airbrush is excellent. You can get lines just as thin as a micron. And remember that every airbrush will give you a thin line, you just have to hold it really close to the surface that you're painting. Next to this line drawn from a ballpoint pen, you can see just how thin these lines are. And because that trigger response is so good, it's really easy to start and stop these lines, which is really important when you're painting. Spraying at 20 psi, 3.5 inches away, this airbrush has a very nice airspeed right out of the box at around 5.3 meters per second. I love to see a lower airspeed like this because as you're painting, it just feels a lot more comfortable. When the airspeed's higher, you just kind of feel it blowing off the surface that you're painting, which can get kind of annoying. And since you have that air control valve on the front, if you want to lower this even more, you could just tighten it down. So it's a cool feature to have. And finally, let's move along to the subjective part of this review, where I switched over to the PS289 just to work on this painting for a little bit and give you my opinions. I'm in the very early stages of this painting, and there's a lot going on in it, so what I'm doing here is 
is just adding some subtle texture into the skin, some small shadows for skin texture. And the airbrush is spraying very well. I find it very comfortable. That trigger control is excellent. I'm trying to spray a bunch of small dots here, so it's important that when I pull back, I get a small amount of paint. And I was playing around with the MAC valve or the air control valve at the front of the airbrush to just adjust different air speeds. And personally, I would prefer if this wasn't on the airbrush. I just don't really like these. For one thing, I'm sitting right next to my compressor, so I could adjust my PSI anytime I want. I don't need to adjust my airspeed at the front of the airbrush. And the second thing is that it's a larger piece of metal right at the front of the airbrush. I kind of find it annoying when I'm painting. If I use my left hand on the front to stabilize the airbrush, I feel like it gets in the way. It does do a great job at giving you that option to control the airspeed if that's something you want. But I do own a few other airbrushes that have these MAC valves and I just don't like them. They're not for me. As I was spraying in some larger areas on the left here, some textures, I loved everything about this spray pattern. It's really tight and the paint was perfectly atomized. There wasn't any sort of graininess and the airbrush was doing exactly what I wanted it to. As I pulled back for paint, I got it and when I pushed forward, it stopped every single time. And it's nice to have that larger paint cup on the top because in this part of the painting, I was only using one color. So it was just kind of nice to fill up the cup and not have to worry about refilling it every few minutes. Out of all the other airbrushes I own, I would say that this one feels similar to the Iwata Eclipse and the Pache Talon. Those airbrushes both have slightly larger nozzle size, but the spray pattern is pretty similar. One other thing that I noticed is that the air valve assembly on this airbrush, which is at a slight angle backwards, felt a bit strange in this painting. The only reason for this is because every other airbrush I own has an air valve assembly which comes down at a 90 degree angle and it's just what I've gotten used to. So nothing uncomfortable here, just different. The trigger spring on this airbrush, like all other GSI Creos airbrushes I've tested, is very, very soft. Even when it's tightened down all the way, there's not that much tension on it. And I think a lot of people will really like this. Personally, I prefer some more tension on the trigger because I feel like I have more control, but a softer trigger is probably better for you in the long run because it's less fatiguing on the finger. So compared to other airbrush brands, this trigger is definitely designed to be softer and lighter. So that's it for this review. Obviously, I think this is an incredible airbrush at such a great price point. For under $100, you're getting a top tier professional airbrush that honestly can compete with the bigger brands like Harder and Steambeck and Iwata. So I'm very happy that I picked this one up and I'll definitely be painting with it quite a bit as I add it into the rotation. So I hope this review was helpful. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you next time.